This was the scene outside the library mall just minutes ago where university students have gathered to protest. We are outside the Senate chamber where UNT Hello is hosting a Q&A with the Israeli Defense Force. According to the UNT Hello Instagram, this event will be held virtually as students can ask questions to the Israeli reservists over Zoom. A tic all tickets have been sold out and a lot of security is present with at least seven officers and a metal detector in the entrance. Pro-Palestinian protesters have been frequently interrupting the event, describing the human costs of the war in Gaza. Jewish, Jewish students' reactions have not been positive. The IDF has not been able to answer questions, according to one of the reporters. Minutes ago, and currently, arguments are ensuing between people outside the chamber. Outside the Senate chamber, there is currently a protest from the UNT Palestine Solidarity Committee in response to the Q&A. The protest started in the UNT Library Mall at 10.30 a.m. According to the PSE Instagram, there have been multiple attempts to protect the invitation of the IDF members. Previous to the event, online spaces such as the UNT subreddit have had very divided responses over this event. Despite Israel Week being held being a yearly occurrence, this year the event has had more criticism due to the recent conflicts. I will update you on the event as it is happening. This is NTTV News at noon. Broadcasting live from the University of North Texas, this is NTTV News at Noon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining NTTV News at Noon. I'm Marshall Farmer. And I'm Sydney Johnson. Iranians react to their country's attack on Israel over the weekend, where the Islamic Republic fired over 300 projectiles in response to Israel's attack on an Iranian consulate in Syria. Vehicles drive through flooded streets in Dubai after a historic amount of rainfall hit the city on Tuesday. The city had four inches of rain in the 12 hours, as much as it normally gets in a whole year. This is the heaviest rainfall Dubai has experienced in 75 years. The rain has disrupted flights at Dubai International Airport, which is one of the world's busiest airports for international travel. People who are trying to travel are stranded on roadways or sleeping at the airport, an unusual sight in Dubai. Schools have been closed for the rest of the school week, and many jobs have been switched to remote work while the flood remains. Well, it looks like this week's clear skies and sunny weather has been covered by clouds today. But luckily, NTTV's Marshall Farmer has all of the details on our current forecast. What do you have for us, Marshall? Thank you, Sydney. So it looks like today we have a bit of a humid day today. We've lost a lot of our sun that we've had the past few days here, uh, but today we're gonna be at 81 degrees with tonight's forecast being around 70, cooling down a little bit. It's gonna be cloudy for the rest of the day, unfortunately, uh, but hopefully we can get a little bit of sun coming back into our forecast. Um, and it, <laughs> look at that, the sun's right here. Tomorrow's forecast, we're gonna get a little bit of sun. And there it goes. We're gonna get about 84 degrees, feeling like a bit like 90 with some mild winds at around 12 miles per hour. Uh, but overall, kind of, you know, the sun coming back out for the rest of the day tomorrow. That's all I have for the weather today. Let's toss it back over to Sydney. Thanks, Marshall. Ford is recalling more than 450,000 compact SUVs and pickup trucks in the U.S. The vehicles are being recalled due to a battery issue that may cause them to lose drive power. Models affected include Ford's Bronco Sport SUVs made between 2021 and 2024 and the Ford Maverick pickup trucks made between 2023 and 2024. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said Ford discovered an undetected low battery charge could lead to loss of hazard light function or loss of drive power, further increasing the risk of a, a crash. Ford dealerships said they will fix the issue for free and notices will be mailed by May 13th. Up next, more on the IDF Q&A in the UNT Senate Chamber and the protest outside. And National Exercise Day is tomorrow. Stay tuned for more. Ugh, a 20 minute walk. I don't wanna do this right now. Don't worry, you can just use transit. Transit, what's that? Transit is a mobile app that provides real-time tracking to connect buses, UNT shuttles, and even A-trains. Simply download the app, then tap on the search bar and type where you want to go. In a matter of seconds, you get results for all available routes. And the best part of it is, it's completely free for UNT students. 
What are you doing? I'm downloading it right now. Download Transit today and remember, make life better without a car. And now we return to Fabric of Passion. Oh, Hector, it will be so hard for us to part, but we must. But, my love, what did I do? I thought we were meant to be together forever. I am so disheartened to say that you're just, just not in style anymore. But you will be, to someone else, in a better place. Y you're gonna shred me? No. I'm donating you to one of the many closing donation boxes available on campus. There is one in the Union by the Syndicate and one on Union Circle Drive. Oh, well, why didn't you just say so? I'm gonna be someone's new shirt. I thought you'd be more distressed. Oh, absolutely not. It was cramped in your closet anyways. Maybe you would like to be shredded after all. Everyone here is really good at actually giving you ideas and talking through your ideas. I think it's a really collaborative environment. The scene at the Union and the Library Mall has been pretty chaotic and intense over the past couple of hours. That's right, it's been a bit chaotic. Let's go to, uh, talk to JC here. JC, tell us what's going on out there. Um, yeah, and that the funding should not be supported. Go. Yes. So, we are outside currently where the protest is taking place. Um, here we have a protester currently. Um, can I ask you her name? Nadine. And what, what do you hope that the impact um, that this protest leaves on campus? Uh, well, I'm hoping that the administration knows that uh, the students are not okay with war criminals being welcomed onto our campus. Um, genocidal propaganda is not welcome here. Uh, it's the reason why this genocide continues. So we as students are not okay with that. And the funding needs to end. And we're here to be vocal about that in case admin didn't know. Well, all right. Thank you very much. We're passing back to the desk. Well, it's been confirmed that today is full of clouds and humidity, but luckily, Marshall Farmer is bringing the heat. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Marshall, what do you have for us? Well, it's going to be a bit cloudy today. The sun might come out later this week. That's the hope for later this week here. It looks like the weather right now, about mid-70s throughout the entire region, 76 in Denton, 75 and 74 kind of throughout the entire area, ranging from the 78s to about 75, 74. Pretty, pretty mild temperatures today, despite the humidity. Uh, looking at the full region here, it looks like, again, across the entire state, mid to upper 70s here, uh, 78 in, da in Dallas, 75 in Austin, 77 in Houston. Now let's see the full day-by-day -day breakdown here in Denton. Uh, highs of around 80s, 80, mid-80s for the next couple of days before the sun unfortunately goes away on Friday and Saturday with a bit of stormy weather. Uh, but look at that, Monday, right there, the sun, like me, will be out, uh, which will be fantastic in the 60s and 70s there uh, with no more rain uh, later in the week. That's all I have for the full weather. Let's toss it back over to Sydney. Thanks, Marshall. I'm definitely looking forward to some of those sunny days. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've been so tired and slacking on my weekly exercise. With the semester intensifying, I haven't had the energy to go work out, but exercise may be the exact thing I need to prepare for finals. Luckily, our segment anchor Aaron Sharp has more details. Aaron? Thanks, guys. You might be wondering why I'm lifting this very heavy dumbbell. That is because I'm getting a head start on National Exercise Day. Tomorrow, April 18th, is dedicated to encouraging everyone to participate in physical activity and exercise. It is the perfect day to start a new habit and build a foundation for a healthy life. Everybody, regardless of age, gender, or physical ability, benefits from exercise. 
Exercise helps with cognitive function and mental health, two things that are extremely important for finals week. Exercise is also good for improving your mood, lowering stress, boosting energy, and having better sleep quality. Exercise doesn't always mean lifting heavy weights or hitting the gym. It can include going on a walk or a bike ride outside, stretching in the comfort of your home, or breaking out the Just Dance games. According to research, just 20 minutes of moderate exercise a day is enough to benefit your health. In that time, you can dance to Rasputin on Just Dance 2 five times to fulfill your daily exercise. Everyone is encouraged to participate in National Exercise Day tomorrow. So break out those yoga mats and Wii remotes or go outside and enjoy the sunny weather. As the old saying goes, you are what you eat. And what you eat is very important to your health and well-being. Segna anchor Deja Jackson went to the Denton Community Market where there's a wide array of healthy food options for you to enjoy. Take a look. The Denton Community Market had the biggest opening day in March on record for the 2024 season. We started in 2020 and we were looking for places to sell our mushrooms because it was really hard in that year. Uh, so opportunity came up and um, farmers markets were pretty much the only ones open because as a food vendor, concession year for living, it was hard back then. All the festivals got closed, but the markets were still going. The Denton Community Market main goal was to contribute to the community by creating a public gathering space that supports local culture and provides a market that brings together visitors. With not only bringing all types of homemade food and treats, but local artists, crafts creators, and farmers. So our menu has all sorts of gluten-free products that you can't really find if you were to just go to the store. Um, so my best sellers are cinnamon rolls, um, I do mini loaves and different flavors, muffins, brownies, all sorts of kind of breakfast sweets and dessert sweets, just a huge variety. We're at the market every week and we're still here trying to promote the store. Um, with, you know, inflation and prices and everything else going on, uh, sales are still kind of up and down. So we love to come to the market. P people that didn't know that we exist or know where we were located, they can come here, get some great cookies and treats, and then also know where our store is. For the very first year ever, the market is here to stay through December to serve the community and give business owners more opportunity to sell their products. Whether you're looking for a place to buy fresh, healthy foods or a place to hang out and enjoy great vibes, the Denton Community Market is the place to be. They're open on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., so make sure to stop by. That's all I have for you guys. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Aaron. The mighty Tesla has taken a tumble. And Record Store Day is coming up this weekend. Stay tuned for more. Do's and don'ts of the Pole Rec Center. See that man over there? Please do not hog weights. Instead, do this. Another important part is having an attentive spotter. See here is an example of a non-attentive spotter. Instead, do this. Now we head to the track, which should be pretty easy, just it's important to pay attention to the way the track goes. Remember to wipe down the equipment after you're done using it. 
The towels are provided by the gym, so it's pretty easy to wipe down the equipment when you are done. Thank you for using the Pole Recreation Center. Welcome back from the break, everyone. I'm Ian Cropper. Once the pride of the electric vehicle market, Tesla has seemingly fallen on hard times. 2023 was a bad year for the automaker, and so far, 2024 has been even worse. The company announced on Monday that 10% of the company's 140,000-person workforce would be laid off. These workers were joined by two top executives with a combined 26 years of experience managing the company. These layoffs are the latest in a series of bad news for the automaker. Declining sales, increasing competition from both American and Chinese companies, and the controversy surrounding CEO Elon Musk have all hampered Tesla. The company's stock is down 35% since the start of this year, and the auto industry in general has overestimated the demand for electric vehicles. In an email to employees, Musk expressed regret over the coming layoffs, saying, quote, There is nothing I hate more, but it must be done. It's unknown exactly where the layoffs will hit, but Texas will likely be impacted. Austin hosts both a gigafactory and the company's corporate headquarters. Not all recent news out of Tesla is bad. The company announced recently that it would unveil a self-driving taxi in August. However, given the company's well-publicized issues with self-driving cars, this alone likely won't be enough to stop the company's decline. That's all I have. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Ian. Well, the Olympic torch was lit in Olympia yesterday, the original birthplace of the ancient games. Now, the torch will begin its relay journey to Paris. With close to 600 torchbearers and thousands of miles to cover, the torch will be handed over to the Paris Olympic organizers. Once there, it will mark the official start of the Games on July 26th. Sydney, I've heard you're quite the record collector. You know, Marshall, I am. I have an entire wall of records at my apartment. Well, then you are in luck, Sydney, because this weekend, this Saturday, is, uh, excuse me, it is record store day. So let's go over to uh, NTTV's assistant operating manager, Kelsey Clark, who has the full story. Records. Though a vast majority choose to stream, they're every collector's dream. And on Record Store Day, that dream becomes a reality. It's amazing. People line up for hours and hours before it starts. We open early at 8 o'clock. Places pack, the line slowly moves, moves in, uh, and our sales certainly go up that day. Record Store Day is an annual event that started in 2007 to acknowledge independently owned shops, and Denton's very own Recycled Books is celebrating. You should have seen it when it was the Taylor Swift one. They were here in the afternoon before, by the time I got here at 6.30, the day of it, the, the line was completely around the block. Exclusive vinyl releases and limited editions from bands such as Paramore to solo artists like Elvis Presley will be available, so long as you can get your hands on them. If you get here only two hours before it starts, you may not get what you're looking for, because these are, they're dedicated people out there. April 20th is the big day, so mark your calendars and join the celebration. For NTTV, I'm Kelsey Clark. You know, Sydney, our live shot anchor, J.C. Ramirez, has been doing an excellent job covering an otherwise chaotic protest at the Union right now. Man, and props to J.C. I've seen quite the crowd of protesters and police officers. Let's go ahead and go over there to see what's happening. J.C.? As we see here, protesters have been chanting since 10.30 a.m. in support of Palestine and the removal of the IDF soldiers on campus. Inside, interruptions of the meeting occurred and some verbal arguments broke out. This is all I have regarding the protest. Now, back to the desk. Thanks, JC. Well, Sydney, there is plenty going on here in Dallas in terms of sports. Yes, absolutely. The Mavericks and the Stars are in the playoffs, and the Rangers just won the World Series in October. Let's hear from our sports anchor, Drew Maurer, to hear all that's coming up. Drew? Yeah, that's right, guys. There's a ton going on even tonight. The Rangers are playing as we speak. And the Stars, they finish out the regular season tonight. So stay tuned for more. Good evening. My name is Amanda Hasbill, and I'm joining you here today in the Union Parking Garage. Today we're going to be going over how to drive safely in the parking garage. Let's go see. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This girl just got hit by a car. Let's go see what happened. Ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? Ugh. 
Did you see that lady hit me with a car? Yeah, we did. I got it all on video. Oh my god. Let's go over here and talk about how we can prevent that. Yeah, not the hospital. Well, right now we're going to ask you a couple questions on how we can drive safely in the parking lot. What are ways that we can be aware of our surroundings? Oh, we can look both ways. Jenna, also, how about putting the distractions away? Yes, just like our phones, turning our music down, and also not focusing on our passengers. Where can you get information on how to get a parking pass? Transportation.unt.edu. If you park in a garage, make sure you pay on the app or look for further instructions on how you should pay. And remember, no pass, no park. Let's all try to keep our mean green community safe. Remember, we're all in this together. Drive, Drive safe. There's no harm in wanting to have fun while in college, but it's easy to lose track of how much you've had. Apps like Drink Control and Alkadroid can help keep track of your consumption and blood alcohol levels. If you or someone else does drink too much, the signs of alcohol poisoning are as follows. Pale skin, vomiting, confusion, low body temperatures, irregular breathing, blacking out, and it's hard to wake up or cannot be woken up. Dude, are you okay? Hey, what's wrong? Wake up. It's an exciting time of year, but it's oh, important to be responsible. If you suspect someone is suffering from alcohol poisoning, get help immediately. You will not get in trouble for seeking help if you are underage. For more info and resources, go to UNT's Division of Student Affairs. So a man's been walking in the desert for days at a time. He finally comes across a bar and orders a Coke. That's not funny. Eh? Eh? Has this ever happened to you? My bike! My bike is gone! Stolen bikes are an epidemic sweeping college campuses across America. What am I supposed to do? It's quite simple. The We Mean Green Fund has partnered with the UNT Police Department to offer free bike locks to any UNT student with a bike. Just show up with your bike in tow and ask. Now I'll never lose my bike ever again. Enough worrying. Get your bike lock today. Does your club or organization look like this? Well, what if you can make it look like this? Wow! Hi, Dilly Day is here with a special TV offer. NTTV wants to air a promotional video for your club or organization. We air on channels Charter 192 and Frontier 46. Whether you have an idea or not, we want to help you create the perfect promotion that gives you the credit and recognition that you deserve. Our team of professional cinematographers works around the clock to make your promo the best it can be. So contact untpromos at gmail.com today to get started on your promotional adventure. But wait, that's not all. If you email right now, I'll double the offer. What? What do you mean we can't double it? I love it. We air it tonight. Success! The Rangers are in the middle of their matinee series against the Tigers in Detroit, and they took Monday's contest 1-0, but dropped one yesterday 2-4. to four. Well, today they're looking to get back on track. We are in the middle of the first inning right now, and the Rangers, they're up 1-0. So they'll wrap up this four-game outing against the Tigers tomorrow at 12-10 once again, and a new face will be trotting out onto the mound. Jack Leiter, the son of former World Series champion pitcher Al Leiter, will be making his major league debut. Leiter was drafted out of Vanderbilt second overall in the 2021 draft, and he slowly crept up the ranks in the minors. He has been super watched throughout the time. With, he was with the Round Rock this year for two games, uh, posting a 377 earned run average through 14 innings with the Express. And now he looks to have a similar outcome in his first major start. Well, it's another packed day for Dallas fans as we see the Dallas Stars face the St. Louis Blues tonight at the American Airlines Center in the final game of the regular season. The Stars, they're already out of contention for the President's Cup, but is that the worst thing in the world? Because the winner of the President's Trophy, which is awarded to the team with the most total points at the end of the season, has not won a Stanley Cup in that same season since the 2012-2013 Chicago Blackhawks. Now guys, let's take a look at the playoff picture here in the West. As of this moment, the Stars are set for a rematch against the Las Vegas Golden Knights, who knocked them out of the playoff race last year on their run to an eventual Stanley Cup. And then there's some other intriguing matchups here too. The Jets just beat the Avalanche 7 to 0, and the, the the Oilers played the Kings, two of Wayne Gretzky's former teams going at it there. That will be interesting to watch. Now the Stars, 
They're not fighting for a playoff spot tonight, but I'll tell you who is, some teams in the NBA. The play-in tournament continues its action tonight with two games on the Eastern Conference side of things. Now let's take a look at the bracket. Last night's games on the left side there, Lakers beat the Pelicans and they'll face the Nuggets in round one. Uh, uh, that's a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals. And then the Kings, they survive and knock the Warriors out of contention. A bad game from Klay Thompson. He had no points, four rebounds. One is not a good game from Klay Thompson. He'll be a free agent this offseason. and that'll be something to watch. Now on the right, we've got some, tonight, some games tonight as well. Winner of Bulls Hawks moves on and the loser, they get knocked out. Two teams that we're not used to seeing in the play-in going at it tonight as well. The Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. I have to think that both these teams find their way into a playoff spot and give the top seeds a little bit of trouble. It's going to be a classic tonight in Philadelphia as Joel Embiid faces off against playoff Jimmy Butler. Certainly some commotion tonight in the world of sports, but that's all for me, so I'll send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Drew. Speaking of sports, Caitlin Clark was taken with the number one overall pick in the WNBA draft by the Indiana Fever. Clark led the Iowa Hawkeyes to the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game two years in a row, and she expects to draw many eyes to the WNBA. Reports state that she will be making roughly $338,000 over the course of her career. Best of luck to Caitlin Clark and all of the other amazing women athletes in the NBA. Thanks for watching NTTV News at noon. Join us again tonight at 6 and tomorrow at noon here on North Texas Television.